Welcome in new episode of Rendering with Brighter 3D. Today we have special guest Hippocrates. Hello Lucas, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Today we want to cover clay rendering. Let's see what is the definition. Usually a preview of 3D visualization, something like a draft. However, clay render does not contain any textures or materials unless specified otherwise. Most of the time, you would be seeing the scene and all the items in it with just a plain white or gray material applied. Wow! That was amazing! So basically, it's really like a rendering of a raw scene without the textures and materials. Uh, with the new version of Brighter 3D, we added a new feature uh, that you can find in extension in Brighter 3D Simples. Remove all the materials. Can you see that? Yes, I can see it. It is important that you save your scene before you do that because your textures will be removed permanently. Okay, I see. For basic uh, clay rendering, you can use new feature that is introduced in SketchUp 2024. The ambient occlusion styles. It looks like that. But I hope we can make it better. So first we go into the Brighter 3D settings window and uh, set up ambient occlusion. Then we press render. Okay, we, in that case we, we need to remove the HDR map from the background. So we can do that in the first step, selecting none as a background. So this is the true geometrical ambient occlusion. Uh, what you've got in SketchUp is screen space occlusion. I'm, I'm not a big fan of those at all. Yes, I can see it. Uh, uh, Lucas, I think the, the reception is not so good because uh, I, I lose your voice sometimes. I, I, don't under, I didn't understand a one word you said. Okay, maybe because I'm streaming 4K stream. Let me change the resolution. A few moments later. Is it better now? Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen um, clearly and I can hear your voice very well. Okay, let's continue. Mm -hmm. So the basic uh, clay rendering definition assumes that there is one common material, probably a grey one or a white one. So let's try to do that. I will change it color to white and apply it for every object. Now I will do something unexpected. Well, I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. I will switch back to unbiased rendering mode and select HDR map for lighting. We will use only direct HDR lighting, but we may try also indirect samples later. Okay, now we need to switch off this HDR map as mm -hmm. a background. We can do that in the first step by switching this combo box to none. Okay. Yay! Yay! Yeah, I think it looks much better than the raw ambient occlusion. Way better. Oh yeah, I'm like way better thanks to science. <laughs> What do you think about it? It looks more natural. You're right, let's add some features like glass in the window. So in, in case of glass, you add a lot of transmissivity, make sure that the diffuse is set up to zero, add a bit of reflectance and try to adjust index of refraction. So for thin air, this index of refraction is 1.01. The values that render is a typical glass, I guess. What do you mean? I mean a common glass. Yeah, for common glass, I think it's 1.2. Tell me, did you ever try to use that button? 
yes, I have this view, and this is something I, I, I understood. Uh, trying uh, this option in different PCs, and I found out that my power PC can handle it, while a laptop couldn't. That's true, post-processing is using GPU for rendering. Let's see how it works. So my intention was to make it uh, look like a, like a game, like you, you the photographer and you make a photo of your renders. Look at this photograph. So the basic option is to zoom in, zoom mm -hmm. out, and pan of the image. Then you've got post-processing effects on the left side. You can use auto exposure to increase the brightness or decrease it. You can use bloom effect to make it look somehow then mag magical. It's like, like everything is slowly. like glow, yeah. Then whenever you press a space or the middle button. You make a photo of your render, so that means uh, mm -hmm. the image is saved in the directory as a JPEG or PNG. You can find it, but find that directory by pressing this button. You put all, all your okay. previous photos here. So it's very simple to, to make different versions, just change settings and, and press space. You can also select output folder in the settings window as well as the extension, the quality. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also make this program full screen by pressing that button. The next effect somehow combined with Bloom is the dirt texture. You can select the dirt texture of your lens, of your camera, and then and it's intensity. Can you see that? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, and you can change the, the amount mm -hmm. of that effect. Now, one of my favorite effects is chromatic aberration. You just press it to, to turn it on, you can select the amount. Try to not overuse it, because it, it's looking weird in that case. It was weird. But just a, a bit of it is, is really nice and it starts looking like a photo. Yeah, it looks eerie. It's very nice effect. The last effect is a vignette that allows you to, to darken somehow an uh, image in the corners simulating how light is getting inside the lens inside the camera by, by lenses mm -hmm. and by the cover you can make it more round or less it's like a vintage effect and so whenever we use post-processing module the main image is still computed in the background mm -hmm. as you know brighter is the progressive renderer so it never ends it always improves the image but as soon as you see that check mark you can assume it is no longer changing so it is good enough so you can stop it but don't do that if you like to update the image in the background you just press this button and you load the new version of it. when you load the new version and all the values that you have applied are lost or kept yeah, if it's if it's rendering in the background and you press the button, you update the the version. Uh, you send mm -hmm. the new version mm -hmm. to the post-processing module, but you keep the all your settings. Yeah. Yes, as long as you don't close the post-processing module window. If you just press uh, Alt Tab, it it is working like that. If you close it, and then the new instance is open, so you need to start over your settings yeah just it's important to not close it mm -hmm. we can also switch camera to parallel projection and make 
that type of image. In that case, we just press stop and start button to re-render the scene. Can I ask you a couple of things? Sure, go ahead. Um, this is a new feature, the, the clay rendering, right? Yeah, the, the, the new feature is to remove all the textures from the scene by this scene tool. Uh, that kind of rendering was available in previous version, but uh, today video is going to show how to use it. At the beginning I promised you that we will try to use indirect uh, HDR lighting as well, so let's try it now. As you can see it's way slower and it doesn't look good. It will converge as well to correct solution but... So in direct light should be off? Yes, exactly. In, in case of such uh, open scenes, direct lighting will be sufficient. Um, I thought that clear rendering was something new, a new feature uh, in your software. But actually it's a... Um, it's not a new feature, it's something that already existed for one year at least. And this is how I'm rendering my, my pictures, my, my models. This is how I do it. But I didn't know it was called clay rendering. Well, not exactly. What, what we are using here is uh, HDR lighting, but in case of clay rendering. Yeah, but you applied some materials uh, uh, when you were rendering it. Yes, I try to apply one common material for every object. You, cho you chose uh, something whitish, but you could choose also something bluish, but always the same. That was just an example. Let's try another HDR map and see what, what will be the difference. Okay, we need to uh, turn off background again. The first tab. As you can see now, we've got different colors from different HDR maps. That's why we like it, because the mood of your image will depend on the HDR map you select. I forgot to tell you about one effect. Uh, Depth of field, do you know it? Yeah, I have played a lot with it. Yeah, that one is important because all other effects probably you can do in Lightroom, but that one requires a depth map. I'm not familiar with the Lightroom. I like this feature very much and I use it. Okay, I think that's all for today. Lucas, thank you so much for the invitation. I enjoyed your presentation and I'm looking forward for the new version. Thank you for coming, Hippocrates, and I hope you to see you next time. Okay, bye!